Hello and welcome to Question Time from Channel Series Global Headquarters, Lagos. I'm Benga Ashiru. One of the key challenges the Nigerian government has been contending with is the mandate of winning investors' confidence in order to stimulate economic growth. Now, in trying to achieve this mandate, the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, FRC, recently introduced a new corporate governance code, which also aligns with the international financial reporting standards. But what's the stance of the FRC on salient issues like the financial status of some not-for-profit organizations? In an economy that desperately cries out for revenue generation, should these entities also be drafted into the tax dragnet in the country? What does the new corporate governance code say about the tenure of CEOs of organizations? And what are the rules of the board composition and corporate structure of these entities? In trying to find answers to these and more related issues, the Executive Secretary of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Mr. Daniel Asakukai, gets on board in this interview. Please join us. Financial Reporting Council is a regulatory agency of the federal government. It's set up to do two things essentially. Okay? It's to the overall purpose is to promote trade and investment in Nigeria, which is why we are supervised by the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Now, in terms of FROC contributing to that promotion of trade and investment in Nigeria, we are set up to do two things. One, to ensure high standards of financial reporting and good corporate governance. Because when those two things come together, or when they are strong in a particular economy, it boosts investor mm -hmm. confidence mm -hmm. in that economy. So our role is to help the Nigerian economy or Nigerian businesses in the production of credible financial statements and in achieving sound corporate mm -hmm. governance. The importance of credible financial reporting, it makes it easier for providers of capital to have confidence in your business mm -hmm. and therefore extend resources. Yeah. Now, good corporate governance does a lot of things, a lot of great things to an organization, but essentially it ensures the sustainability or the longevity of an organization. Mm. Okay? So it ensures, it, it helps the organization to survive over many generations. So that's our role, those two aspects, good corporate governance, high quality financial statements. It's been well established that economies with um, businesses that meet high standards, you know, in terms of financial difficulties, financial mm. crisis, they tend to survive better. So, following a number of financial, global financial crises in the past, you know, the international community came together and agreed to implement standards in a number of areas, internationally and in in country so that economies are better able to withstand these problems that do arise now and again. And one of those areas was in the area of um, corporate governance. So internationally there is something called the OECD standards of um, corporate governance, which if you like establishes a global benchmark that countries should aspire to meet in the areas of in the area of corporate governance. So FRC as the arm of government responsible for this, what we've simply done is to try and implement those globally agreed standards in the Nigerian context. So which is why we're championing the production of a national code of corporate governance. There are some aspects of this code, some, some clauses in this code that are of immense public interest. And one of it is the one that states that um, the uh, CEO of any organization cannot, of any public holding organization cannot hold that office for more than 20 years. Could you shed more light on this? Okay, in, in the code that has recently been approved by the board of the FRC, it's a principles-based code. So rather than being specific or dogmatic about tenor of office holders, what we have focused on is to establish clear principles which companies should seek to implement 
because of their benefits for business. Mm. So, for example, there is no provision that a CEO cannot be in office for more than 20 years. However, there are principles speaking to the benefits of diversity on the board, the benefits of refreshing the people that are involved in governance. Yeah, but specifically now, are you saying there are no clear tenure now in the, in the new code of the, in the new corporate governance code? In the new code, because it's principles based, it establishes principles. So there's a principle that says it's beneficial to the governance of an organization, for example, to periodically refresh the board. Yeah? Now, what does that mean? What does refreshing Isn't the that board ambiguous? Pe periodically mean? Now, that is a principle. Now, the, the code is made of principles and practices. So it also estab sets out best practices in order to implement that principle. So, for example, you might say it's ambiguous, but what is good practice in terms of the frequency with which when, companies when, when refresh you say, their board? When, when you say it's expedient for companies to refresh their board, it could be taken from several angles, yes. perhaps in terms of its capacity building, in terms of training. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> that's, that, that, that's, that's seem more like a political statement, isn't it? No, it's not a political statement. I mean, you and I can agree on the principle. We both agree that it is beneficial to refresh the board periodically. Are you coming up with this code uh, based on uh, the, the fact that there was an antecedent on uh, this code that in which uh, in, in trying to enforce compliance, uh, some people got their hands burned. Is the FRC cowed? into coming up with this unclear principle? Certain, certainly not. The, the thing you, 